weak bases like weak acids also dissociate in water. And just like we solved for equilibrium problems involving weak acids, we can also do the same with weak bases. So this lecture video is really all about weak bases from concepts to equilibrium problem solving. A few lectures ago, I showed this reaction where ammonia reacts with water to undergo a proton transfer to form the ammonium cation and hydroxide. So this type of reaction is very typical of a weak base. And just to remove the pictures here, here's ammonia again reacting with water. And this equilibrium favors the reactants. Generally, we can rewrite this as a weak base represented by B in water dissociating to form hydroxide and the conjugate acid of the weak base. And now we're going to describe a new equilibrium constant called Kb, or the base dissociation constant. In this reaction, because we start with a weak base, water now acts as an acid, and we also form the conjugate base of water, hydroxide, and the conjugate acid of the weak base. The KC expression for this reaction is shown here. And just like with Ka, the concentration of water as a solvent doesn't really change. So we can simplify this equilibrium expression by removing water and just leaving behind the conjugate acid times hydroxide over the weak base. And this equality is equal to the base dissociation constant Kb. Characteristic of a weak base is that you're going to have a very small Kb value. And that means then that you form very little products. So the concentration of hydroxide should be very small. This is an example of a weak base equilibrium problem where we're asked to solve for the pH of a 0 0.050 molar solution of ammonia. And we're given the Kb value for this weak base. So the first step in solving this problem is to write down the Kb reaction. And this is the one we just discussed. So here it is again, ammonia plus water to give hydroxide and ammonium cation. Now I can write the ICE table and populate it with the initial concentration of ammonia. And here on the product side, Essentially, we have no products. Technically, pH 7 water has a concentration of hydroxide of 1 times 10 to the minus 7 molar, but this is a really minor small value and is essentially negligible considering the amount of weak base that we start with. So this reaction has to move to products because we only have reactants. So the change is minus x for ammonia and plus x for both of these products. And again, the minus 1 and the plus 1 coefficients come from the fact that the coefficients in the balance reaction are all 1. Next, we can sum the rows of initial and change to get these equilibrium expressions. Because Kb is such a small value, especially relative to this initial concentration of ammonia, we can make a small x approximation and say that at equilibrium, 0.05 minus x is still approximately 0.050. In the next step, what we're going to do is look at the Kb expression. And that's given here, where my product hydroxide appears in the numerator. So you can see I can solve for the concentration of hydroxide from this Kb expression. And from there, I can move forward to use the hydroxide concentration to solve for the pOH using this equality. And once I have pOH, I can use the 
fact that pH plus pOH must always equal to 14 in water at room temperature. And so I can now calculate the pH of the solution. So this basically is a map of the remaining steps to solve this problem. So coming back to Kb here, I'm going to plug in these equilibrium concentrations. And I get x squared in the numerator divided by 0 0.050 equals the Kb value. This gives me a straightforward way to solve for x. And x is 9.5 times 10 to the minus 4. And this indeed is a very small number, which tells us that the assumption that x is small was a correct one. Now, x represents the hydroxide concentration. So basically, the pOH is equal to minus log of x. And by plugging in that value of x, I get that the pOH of this solution is 3.02. And since we're asked for pH, I want to take that into this last column here. Solve for pH by taking 14 minus the pOH value, and we get that the pH of the solution is 10.98. Now, because this is a weak base and it dissociates in water to form hydroxide, we would expect that the pH should be basic and greater than 7. So this is a good check that this pH value is correct. In the next two slides, I'd like to develop an important relationship between Ka and Kb. Remember that I've said that weak acids and their conjugate bases are like two sides of the same coin. While conjugate bases, A minus, are themselves weak bases, and that means they can also dissociate in water. So here's the reaction where we start with the weak acid, and in water, it undergoes a Ka reaction or dissociation to form its conjugate base, A minus, and the hydronium ion. Now, instead, if we started with the conjugate base, A minus, in water, then the reaction that happens is the Kb reaction, where the base dissociates to form hydroxide ion and the weak acid. So I'm going to take a leap here and add these two reactions to give an overall reaction, which I'm going to call the sum. So you'll notice that HA appears on both sides of the reaction, so that will effectively cancel out. And the same is true for its conjugate base. What that then leaves us behind is water plus water gives hydroxide plus hydronium ion. And this should be recognizable as a reaction we've seen before. This is the auto-ionization or self-dissociation of water, and it has its own equilibrium constant, k tub u. Recall from chapter 17 that when you sum two equations to give an overall equation, then the equilibrium constant of the overall reaction is actually a product of those individual reactions' equilibrium constants. In other words, Ka times Kb is equal to Kw, and that has a value of 1 times 10 to the minus 14. If I were to take the minus log of this equality, then I would get that Pka plus Pkb will equal to Pkw which has a value of 14 at room temperature. A weak acid HA and its conjugate base A- are two sides of the same coin. And that applies to the Ka for that weak acid and the Kb for its conjugate base. Because Ka times Kb is constrained to have to equal Kw. Another way to reinforce this relationship is to write out the expressions for Ka and Kb, and to take the product 
of Ka times Kb, which would be the same as summing these two reactions. If we take the product of these two expressions, you'll notice that HA appears in the numerator and the denominator, so they would cancel out, and so does A minus in the numerator and the denominator. So after canceling those out, what we're left behind is that Ka times Kb is equal to the hydronium ion concentration times hydroxide concentration. And this product is Kw. So this is just another way to reinforce these relationships shown below. And that leads to another interdependent relationship. The Ka and the pKa of a weak acid are very much tied to the Kb and the pKb of its conjugate base. We can use the Ka and Kb relationship to look again at this chart where we had acids compared to their conjugate bases. And so one of the relationships that we learned before was that the stronger the acid, the weaker its conjugate base. And on the other end, the stronger the base, the weaker its conjugate acid. Now this type of inverse relationship should make sense because of this equality. If Ka times Kb is a fixed value, then that means Ka and Kb are inversely related. So the higher the Kb, the lower the Ka, and vice versa. The higher the Ka, the lower the Kb. So let's take a look at three specific examples. So I've chosen acetic acid, hydrogen sulfide, and ammonium. And on this side will be their conjugate bases. And you can see by the Ka values that acetic acid has the highest Ka and is the strongest acid of the three. If we divide Ka into Kw, what we get out is the Kb values of their conjugate bases. And now we can see that acetate is actually the weakest base of the three, and ammonia, which has the largest Kb value, is now the strongest of the three. So let's focus on the pKa plus pKb version of this relationship. So we can take Ka values and convert them into pKa by taking a minus log. And here are the pKa values for these weak acids. And those with the lower pKa values are stronger. On the other side, we can do the same thing with Kb. We can take the minus log to get out these pKb values. And again, the lower the pKb value, the stronger it is as a base. And another relationship you'll see is that if you sum the pKa plus the pKb, then you'll get that it's also constrained to 14. Again, it's important to emphasize that the Ka and the pKa of a weak acid, along with the Kb and pKb of its conjugate base, are all interdependent. And given any one of these values, you can find the other three, just like it was the case between hydronium ion, hydroxide ion, pH, and pOH. On my last slide here, I'd like to show you another example of a weak base equilibrium problem. Here we're asked to determine the pH of a 0 0.20 molar NaOCl solution. And we're given that HOCl has a Ka of 2.9 times 10 to the minus 8. So this should be a hint that OCl minus is the conjugate base of the weak acid, HOCl. Sodium is an ion that's considered a spectator ion, 
in that it doesn't participate in any acid-base chemistry with water. So we can basically ignore the sodium and just focus on the OCl minus conjugate base. So first I'd like to write the reaction where OCl minus dissociates some water to form hydroxide and its conjugate acid, HOCl. And this is the KB reaction. So just like before, we would set up an ICE table where we have the initial concentration of OCl minus and initially zero amounts of products. And as this reaction moves forward, the change will be minus X for the reactant and plus X for the products. And then summing initial and change, I get these expressions for their equilibrium concentration values. So next we can think about the K expression, which would be KB for this reaction. And again, we want to solve for the hydroxide concentration so that we can then use it to solve for pOH, which we can then ultimately use to solve for pH. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that we need Kb, but we're not given the Kb of OCl minus. Rather, we're given the Ka for its weak acid. So there's one extra step where we need to solve for Kb by dividing Ka into Kw. So we have Kw equals 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. And below that, we plug in the Ka value. And that gets us a Kb value of 3.4 times 10 to the minus 7. Because this Kb value is very small, 10 to the minus 7, relative to our initial concentration of 0.2, then we can make a small x approximation and say that at equilibrium, the concentration of this conjugate base is roughly the same as at initial time. With the Kb value, we can move into the second column here and plug in these expressions and solve for x. And so here's the Kb value on the left. And on the right, we have x squared for the products in the numerator and 0 0.20 for OCL minus concentration in the denominator. And then solving for x, we get that x equals 2.6 times 10 to the minus 4. Now, x represents the concentration of hydroxide at equilibrium. So by taking the minus log of x, we would get the pOH value. And that's shown here. So plugging in x and taking the minus log, we would get that the pOH of the solution is 3.58. In the last step here, because pH and pOH must sum to 14, we can calculate that pH is equal to 14 minus the pOH, and that gives us a value of 10.42. And consistent with the Kb reaction, because we form hydroxide, we would expect the solution to be basic. So indeed, the pH value is greater than 7.